I'm Big Lou. You're watching Big Lou Barbecue and other things I want to do. And today I want to show you how easy it is to build your very own ugly drum smoker. They're often called. They're made out of a 55 gallon or 208 liter metal shipping container. And um, boy, oh boy, they make some beautiful barbecue. So you may call them an ugly drum smoker, but they make beautiful barbecue and it's delicious too. All right. Uh, I built one a few years ago all by myself. I thought about it, went to the hardware store, got the parts. It worked great, but it came time after a few years to maintain it, to repaint it, to update it, and things like that. And Steven at Ugly Drum Smokers Texas sent me a few parts, and I uh, updated my UDS. That's what they're called, okay? Ugly Drum Smokers, UDS, right? I updated it, and I made a little video about the refurbishment of it. And after I did that, he contacted me again. He said, hey, Big Lou, would you like to demonstrate on your channel how easy it is to build one from the start using a UDSparts.com kit? And I said, sure I would. He said, I'll have UDSparts.com send you one. And the guy at UDSparts.com agreed, and he sent me a kit, and I thought I was gonna get the essential kit. That's the basic kit. It's got everything you need to make beautiful barbecue. Sells for just under $100 on their website, at least at this time in the spring of 2020. And um, I thought that's what I was gonna get, but I got this one that's a step up, the complete parts kit. Comes with everything you need, and it comes with a grate. But I didn't get the grate because we've got plans to get a grate for this one, so we asked them not to send the grate, okay? Um, I've got grates to use, and i got another grate coming for it. So when you see this kit, it won't be with a grate, but if you order one, you'll get a grate with it, all right? And then Steven sent me some more parts, because, see, he makes some of the parts sold at UDSparts.com. So they're sold under the Drumtex brand. So I got some other accessories, too, like caster mounts and a really cool flag or fishing pole holder or umbrella holder. I mounted that thing on there, and I could hold a flag up like that if I want to, or I could hold an umbrella on it if it was raining or it was too bright a sun on my smoker, or I could take it out to my pond, and if I'm tight lining for catfish, I could put a fishing rod in it. All right. Anyway, let me show you what comes in the kit, and let me show you how I build it. I do want to tell you I did this entirely by myself, and um, so I most of the working parts where I'm measuring, drilling, painting, I'm not doing any video at the time because I'm the one working, all right? But after each step, I'll tell you what I did and I'll tell you how I did it. So stay tuned, watch. It's real easy to do with one of these parts kits from UDSparts.com. Well, the complete kit comes with this great 1440 charcoal basket made out of heavy gauge steel, comes complete with an ash catcher. You'll also get a an exhaust damper, it's two inches, and two intake dampers, which are one and a half inches, a handle, all the hardware you need to attach everything on this kit. Lava lock sealant, you're gonna get this great tool hanger, you're going to get a bottle opener, in case you get thirsty while you're making it or thirsty while you're barbecuing in it. All right, you're gonna get a lava lock thermometer, you're going to get rib hooks, in case you wanna order the rib hanger later. All right, you're gonna get a great lifter with it as well. Remember, if you order it, you'll also get a cooking grate. We decided not to get the cooking Looking great. Now you're looking at some of the drum tech stuff that Steven sent me. These are the great caster mounts. All right, they do a great job, and these are the new style as well. And I got to tell you, I kind of like them better than the old style. All right, and um, he sent me. They stack together and they ship real well, and they're a lot lighter as well. He also sent me a hinge, which is available on UDSparts.com, as well as this cool flagpole and fishing pole holder. And look at that, some fleur de lis. All right, he sent me three fleur de lis. I know it's hard for that Texas boy to make fleur de lis for me, but I sure am glad he did it. They look so good on the side of a football helmet. I think they look a little better than the star. I think Steven might disagree, but I like them. All right, so Steven got me the uh, drum. He says, I'll get you the drum. He had his friend Heath uh, sneak it across the border to me. I met him down in Sulphur, Louisiana. Here is the drum right over here. I had a cover on it. It rained last night, so it may be wet. And the lid's falling off as I take it. Take the cover off. Heath brought it to me and uh, he primed it, but I've had the cover on it, but that's okay. That rust, nothing to it. Brand new, straight sided drum, this one. And so I need to get drilling on it and get this kit made. It's going to be real easy to do, not too hard. And if I can do it, you can too. All right, so I agreed I'd do this. Hey, look, they're giving me uh, the kit, 
and they're giving me some extra accessories and I even got the drum and all I had to do was buy the paint and put the effort in and buy a few little hardware parts to put on the extra accessories. The kit comes with all the hardware you need, all the nuts and bolts and fasteners you need to put in everything in the uh, complete kit from UDSparts.com. You'll have all that, but if you get any other accessories to add on to it, you may need to purchase some hardware for it. Anyway, um, there's a link on the UglyDrumSmokerParts.com page at this complete kit for a guide of how to put it together. I tried to follow the guide um, exactly as it is, but you can vary it if you want to, want to get creative. I was trying to demonstrate this, so I kept it the way it is. Here's how we measured and drilled the holes. It says, first, find the seam of your drum in order to uh, make the center line on the other side. Okay, I really don't want the seam to be the back of my drum because I want to be able to put um, great bolts in it and stuff like that at areas and I want one right in the front and center. So I want to make my back line right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this hinge and I'm going to line that edge up with the hinge right there with the seam. And then when that comes across, that's going to be my back. I'm going to measure down and I'm going to mark it straight across and I'm gonna use a chalk line and uh, mark my center line so that it's straight across from where this hinge hits right there. Okay, so it's two inches or five centimeters from the center line. And I got it marked all the way down and I'm going to uh, just chalk this one too and then measure around to the other side and uh, make our center line. All right. The drum is 71 inches around, so that would be 35 and a half. So I'm gonna mark it at the 35 and a half line, and that will be my center line. All right, well, there it is, my center line. Now, I'll be measuring um, things to put on there from the center line. The thermometer go right through the center line, but the uh, intakes down at the bottom will be so many inches according to the uh, diagram they have there from the center line. I'm upside down so I can mark the holes for the caster mounts. What I did was I put one in the center of the center line, one in the center of my reverse line back there, measured 17 and three quarters inches around and uh, drew a little line so I could put these two on. And um, what I'm gonna do is just mark the holes so I'll know where to drill. Then take them off, paint them, and when everything's painted, we'll put them on. Step is to measure 10 inches left and right of the center line and three and a half inches from the bottom. And so since it's upside down right now, that's from the bottom. So right about where those tapes cross, I need to mark, and that's gonna be the center of the air intakes. The dogs found something to bark at just now, but the next step is to measure 26 inches up from the bottom. And this is a 34 and a half inch tall drum. You can see that right there. And I'm going to mark it right there on my center line, and that is my great bolt. And uh, so it's going to go right there. Oh, right there it is. Right there. And I'm going to do that uh, on the opposite line, on the opposite side, and on halfway around. And I've already got that mark because I marked it for my casters earlier. Well, casters aren't part of the kit, but since I had the casters, I'd already measured and marked where they are and had that line right there. And so all I got to do is just run up the tape measure right here to the 26 mark. If I can keep the camera straight and mark it right there. And do that on the other side and my great bolts are marked. So I've got them all marked now. I will say it doesn't matter if they're all exactly the same distance apart, but it does matter if they are all the same distance up from the bottom because you don't want your grate not to sit level. But if they're a half inch or two, or even an inch off from each other, that won't matter a bit. Heck, you could probably get away with just three great bolts if you wanted to. Anyway, they do have to be exactly level. So make sure your marks are exactly 26 inches up from the bottom. All right, back on center line now. And I've got that marked at the 26. And I wanna go down to the 24 and a half and we're gonna drill a hole for the thermometer. The thermometer's right here, this lava lock thermometer. Now it says with their other kits and other thermometers, they recommend only going an inch down. So you'd mark it at the 25, not the 24 and a half. But this one goes flush up against the surface of the drum. And so in order for it to clear the uh, bolt head that'll be sticking out right here for the grate, it needs to go an inch and a half down. So I'm gonna mark right here at the uh, 24 and a half mark. And um, we'll drill there for the thermometer. 
Well, now I've made another mark, actually a line, four inches above the grade bolt, 30 inches up from the bottom. Now what that does is that gives me a reference point to put in the tool hanger so that I can put that middle tool hanger right there and I'm gonna mark each of the holes and uh, drill it. And so I'm just gonna put the tool hanger right there. Eventually I may put some spacers out so the tool hanger sits a little off the drum, but it's fine right there next to it. And that's the way it's gonna be now. So. 30 inches from the bottom is where it's recommended to put the tool hanger. Of course, you could put it wherever you wanted to. If you wanted to put it right there on the lip, you could do that too. But it's uh, your call, but I'm going with the recommended in the thing and it says 30 inches, so that's where the tool hanger's going. All right, this mark right here is 12 inches from my center line right over there. And it's about even with the hole I have for the tool center. And it is for the obligatory bottle opener. Now it doesn't say, it says recommended about 12 inches from the center line, about even with the tool hanger. But you can put the bottle opener anywhere you want to or don't put it on it. It doesn't make any effect on how well your smoker smokes. It's just that a lot of people add bottle openers to their UDS for aesthetic and practical reasons. You know, I got Topo Chico's I might want to open. So anyway, I don't know if I should put it here with that being the bottom hole, or if I put it there, but I'm gonna make that decision, mark the bottom hole on it, and I'll have the bottle opener there. Time to mark the holes where I'm gonna drill on the lid. Now the kit comes with the handle, and the kit comes with the exhaust. Now, it's recommended that the exhaust goes in back as the two air intakes are in the front, all right? But, I was given, you can get accessories, you know, the kit doesn't have everything, so I've got this powder coated, uh, hinge that Stephen at Ugly Drum Smokers uh, Texas sent me. And so I need it to go about right here. So I can't put the exhaust all the way in the back anyway. I also kind of like it a little further toward the center. So I'm gonna put the exhaust about right there. It's recommended that the handle goes in center mass. Now, if I had this on a hook and I was hooking it, didn't have the hinge, I'd probably put the handle about right there. But I'm just gonna put the handle about right here. Now, as you can see, it fell apart because it's not together yet i'm not going to do that till i paint it but you can see how it goes together here let me uh put that on there try to do that one-handed there you go it goes on with these um i don't remember what you call these things the technical terms i always called them tap caps because it makes sense you put them on and then you tap it in with a hammer so anyway i don't know what you call them they've got a real name i just forgot it at the moment i'll probably write it down at the bottom of the screen when i find out hey i've got it all drilled i've got some things i want to tell you about the drilling process I use three different sizes of bits. One for most of the mounting holes, like here on the handle or there for the hinge, I used a smaller bit. I used a bigger one for the grill grate because those bolts are bigger. And I used one, one, a bigger one, one more time for the thermometer so it would fit. Now, for the air intakes and the exhaust vent, the exhaust vent required a two inch hole. Now, if you get the screw in type that goes into a bung hole and just screws in, you don't need to worry about uh, drilling a two inch hole, but I needed a two inch hole saw. I had one for wood. I was quickly wearing it out. I said, I gotta go get one for metal. So I ran up to the hardware store, picked one up for metal. I already had the Arbor, but you're gonna need a hole saw. But I didn't bother buying two. The ones for the air intakes are one and a half inches, I believe, or maybe one and three quarters, but I think they're one and a half inches. But the air intakes uh, got plenty of room for a two inch hole. So I just went ahead and used a two inch hole saw for that. And of course it'll cover it up. Anyway, everything is drilled. So it's now time to put on the primer. So what I'm gonna do is uh, put painter's tape on the inside so that it doesn't go, no paint goes inside the drum, put on the primer, put on the paint. And then when the paint's dry, we're ready to assemble. All right, so once all the holes were drilled, it was time to paint. All right, well, here it is. It's been several days since I measured and drilled, and um, it's time to assemble. I put some paint on it. I wasn't satisfied with that paint. Went back to the store, got more paint. Uh, it's got three coats of this yellow on it. It has two coats of an, another uh, paint on it underneath that and a high heat primer and all. Anyway, um, I'm a tall guy, and I don't have trouble reaching to the bottom of the drum like when I put that painter's tape on the inside there of where these uh, holes were so that paint doesn't get on the inside of the drum. But attaching the hardware is really easy 
for the grate and thermometer and all the stuff at the top. But the stuff at the bottom can be very difficult. Even though I'm six foot three and can reach to the bottom of the drum, it's still really hard to attach uh, nuts on one side and hold a screwdriver or a wrench on the other side and attach the hardware. Usually I have my son help me. He's not around today to help me. So um, I'm gonna have to try to do that by myself. Uh, if I figure out a system on how to do it, then I'll, I'll tell you. Um, but that's the hard part. Putting the hardware on the lid and the great level up or so is really easy. It's All right, after I painted, I put the bottom things on. Let me tell you, my son wasn't available to help me at that time. You really want somebody to help when you're attaching the equipment at the bottom. Uh, the two intake vents, which come with the kit, and any other accessories you get, like those caster mounts that Steven sent me from Ugly Drum Smokers, Texas, all right? Um, I did it myself. I'm six foot three and I'm a tall guy. It wasn't very easy. I got a long extension on a ratchet wrench with one of those universal bolts I showed you there, or we'll show you there, and um, a magnet that hold the nut on the end with the magnet, and I'd screw in it in a little bit, leaning way over in the drum like this, and um, the rib, the side of the drum, it left some bruises right here below my sternum and on my rib cage. And my wife saw those. She says, where'd you get those bruises? I said, I don't know. She touched one of them. I felt that pain and I knew it came from the side of that drum. I highly recommend getting somebody to help you. I was able to put uh, the stuff on at the bottom, the two intakes and the caster mounts, but it was not easy. And um, it was quite frustrating. You drop the nut down and the bottom falls off the magnet and it took a lot longer than it should have. Find somebody to help you with uh, attaching it so that somebody can reach down in the drum and hold the nut and somebody else could be on the outside turning the screwdriver to put the stuff in. Well, I got all the hardware attached to the bottom and I did it by myself. It's not easy and I would strongly suggest having two hands when you did it, but I was able to do it with the um, help of a magnet on the stick and that little universal joint thing on the end of a socket wrench. Um, I do recommend having two hands to attach the stuff on the bottom. Uh, the intakes is all you got to do if you just have the kit. If you add on caster mounts, then you'll need, uh, you know, to do that too and purchase the hardware for it. One thing about the hardware, you can use stainless steel, which is advised, but you can use just regular steel, but you cannot use anything that is galvanized or zinc plated that's going to be on the inside of the drum. If it's going to have a nut or a screw head on the inside of the drum, don't use anything with zinc on it. Anyway, all the uh, caster mounts and the two intakes are mounted and they're all, can you see down there? Can you see the bolts down there? Zoom in a little bit. Got them all on there where the uh, air intakes are and everything. So everything's secure. Everything else is just pan comido, a piece of cake to uh, attach. One other thing, make sure you use that lava lock gasket material around the air intakes. The first time I used the drum, I had some grease leaking out from it. I had to take them off. I took them off again by myself, which was a little easier, but my son helped me put them on uh, the second time. But we had to add that um, lava lock gasket material. You can see that in the picture there. So make sure you do that when you add the bottom intakes. All right, after that, attaching the top stuff, it's real easy. You can reach in, hold the screwdriver, hold the ratchet wrench or socket wrench or whatever, attach all the other bolts toward the top, the great bolts, the thermometer, everything goes on kind of easy. This is what it looked like when I was finished. Well, there it is. Fleur de Lis, got the intakes, flat black. Here's the flagpole holder. It is directly opposite of the uh, bottle opener, which is right over here. All right. I put the hinge in the back. I'm going to talk more about that later. Some people put it on the side. I'll talk about why. There's the bottle opener and there's the whole view from around it. Now my uh, tool holder, I painted it black and it may not be exactly straight, but I called the uh, customer service and complaint department and the warranty and repair department of the manufacturer. And I told myself to suck it up and deal with it because I am the manufacturer, right? So it's close, but it might not be exactly straight. Look guys, if I could do this, you can do this. I'm not a super handy guy. I'm not inept, mind you. I'm 
capable of doing a lot of household things around the house, but I'm, and I enjoy doing projects like this, but I think anybody could build one if they wanted to. Some people don't want to, and if you don't, that's why Ugly Drum Smokers Texas exists. Steven can build you one. But if you would like projects like this, highly recommend this kit, but I haven't used it yet. All right, got some uh, things I want to point out to you. One, here on the chimney, as well as the two air intakes, this bolt goes on with one of those um, acorn nuts, sometimes they call it stop nuts, uh, lock nuts, got the little nylon thing in here. And there's a little sweet spot. If you tighten it up too much, you're not gonna be able to move it. If you tighten it up too, if you don't tighten it up enough, it's just gonna swing around, all right? But there's a sweet spot where it stays in place. And that's not important on the top one as much as it is on these because you want to be able to adjust these to just the right level, right? So if you get it too tight, back it off just a little bit, but not much. All right. I wanted to put the hinge in the back. It's also recommended that the exhaust go toward the back if the uh, intakes are in the front. Of course, it'd be the other way. Now, there really is no back or front or side on a cylindrical uh shape right it's a can it's got four sides all right top side bottom side inside outside but it doesn't really have a right or left back or front it's round right so a lot of people i wanted to put it in the back and i wanted to hinge right behind it so that when it's on the hinge it's kind of balanced i didn't want it to be too unbalanced i know that the handle and the chimney might kind of balance each other out but i didn't want to have to do it that way i wanted the heaviest part on the lid right behind the hinge now, when you open one like this, I'm kind of tall, but shorter person or something, if you hit your forearm right there, you could burn yourself. Furthermore, you're opening it up and all that hot air is going to your forearm. When you open one on a hinge, you want to stand on the side. Remember, there's really not a side anyway, and open it up. So that's how I need to open it. But I put the uh, hinge directly 180 degrees across from the what's the front quote unquote with the emblems and the thermometer and the tool hanger on it because that's the way i wanted to do it but i do know that i need to open it stand on the side when i open it up all right so wiped off the surface rust and coated it down with canola oil and uh, i filled that charcoal basket about two-thirds full that's still probably a little too much i'm just going to fire it up for a couple hours to season it in but um i got a scientific reason for filling it up that much and that is because that's all the charcoal i had left in that bag i've got one of those uh, fire starters down there i'm gonna light one in my hand toss it in there like a cherry bomb boom i could do a firework you know toss it in there and uh light this basket up and get this thing seasoned up well, it's lit and it's coming up the temperature. It seems to be doing what it's supposed to do. I want to talk a couple things about the handle I should have mentioned to you in that earlier segment when we were doing the walk around before I let it. If you don't have a hinge, it's probably best to put the handle in the center. Of course, you can put it wherever you want to. The other thing I want to tell you is that these uh, button caps, they called them. I called them tap caps, but they called button caps. These are some heavy duty serious button caps and boy you really need to uh they don't fit on there easy like the ones that go with kids toys and stuff you remember when your kids were small and you're putting together santa claus toys a lot of the toys would have stuff like that they would snap on fairly easy these you got to hammer in pretty well so i put one end on and then tried to put the other end on i put the bracket on first thinking it would be easier to screw it in don't do that once you paint the bracket, go ahead and assemble the handle because I've tried to put a wood block here and hammer that side. That's not going to work. Had to wind up taking the bracket off, hammering the thing on, and then putting the bracket back on. It's real easy to put these screws in. There's plenty of room for a screwdriver uh, once the handle is together. So that just, if you're doing this, don't be as foolish as I was. Uh, put the hand, assemble the whole handle together before mounting it to the lid. Wound up marring up my paint in a few places and stuff like that through that process and Anyway, just wanted to let you know. I've had it going for several hours and I've tried to play with the uh, intakes, try to get used to them. I've brought it down everywhere between 175 and 350. I've right now got it at 300. Um, 
it's been doing well. I've tried to hold each temperature. I did 175, 200, 225, 250, 275, 300, 325, and 350. And now I'm back at 300. I'm gonna start, drop a grate in here for my kettle grill and cook something in it. I should have a grill for this coming in next week. And you'll see a lot more cooks on here. But anyway, I think everything inside should be good and seasoned by now. It's been running about three hours and, um, Kind of, kind of easy to uh, operate that. Of course, I've had experience with my other drum smokers, and uh, so I kind of knew about how much airflow I needed at the top or the bottom or whatever. But anyway, I'm quite pleased. Everything seems to be holding up. Look, if I can build this, you can build this, and this UDS parts kit makes it real easy, and then you can buy other accessories. I'm gonna talk to you about that in just a moment. But I know as well as anybody, the sense of pride and the sense of fun it is to cook stuff on something that you made. I built my first smoker in 2005 or 2006. It wasn't a UDS or a drum smoker. It was a different type of smoker, but I cooked on it until 2014, when my wife and I moved to this home, I left it behind at the other home. And in 2017, I built my first UDS, all right? And recently, earlier this year, I took it all down, repainted it, and rebuilt it. Used a different slide vent from UDSparts.com too, all right? So I guess you could say that one is one and a half or two uh, builds there. And then this would be my third UDS drum build and my fourth smoker build overall. So I can tell you as well as anybody, there's a sense of pride in cooking stuff on something you made. You know, like if you make your own rub or your own sauce, you know the pride you have. And hey, I made this. When you do that and you're doing it in a uh, smoker that you made, boy, that feels good. And there's also the sense that when you make one that it's never quite complete, the project's not quite complete. You're always thinking of things you could do extra to it, other mods you can do. See, this one's not quite complete yet. Oh, it's ready to smoke. All right, I've already cooked in it, as a matter of fact, by the time I'm filming this. But I got plans, I got plans for it, all right? I wanna put a probe port in there so I can use a digital thermometer. And I may put a shelf on it. I may put a shelf on the side, I may put a shelf in the back, I may put it on the other side, I don't know yet. If I put a shelf, I'm not gonna put a digital thermometer holder stand thing on it. If I don't put a shelf, I'm gonna put something that, a bracket of brace of some sort that holds a digital thermometer, all right? And, um, if I don't put the shelf on there, I'm gonna put handles on the side. I've already got the handles. I've already got the probe port. All right, so I'm thinking about what I wanna do. So, and I'm going to make other changes to it too. That's part of the fun of building your own. You can always make modifications. You don't have to worry about voiding any warranties. You are the warranty. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking forward to keeping this project going. And so in future videos, when you see it, well, maybe you'll see handles or a shelf on there. Well, I've added stuff to it part of the fun. And UDSparts.com has a lot of accessories to choose from too. So check that out as well. Anyway, I cannot thank Stephen Powell at Ugly Drone Smokers Texas enough for um, setting me up with the opportunity to build this drum and demonstrate it to you uh, how easy it is to build a drum smoker. Kate, thank the folks at UDSparts.com for agreeing to it and sending the kit. If you order the kit, you will get a great with the kit. And um, guys, it's been a lot of fun to build this. I know it's been a long video, but it's not a long process to build one. You could do it in a weekend. It took me about a week because I was waiting on paint to dry and weather to clear because I don't have a shop. I was doing it outside in my backyard. And, you know, I'm not I'm just a high school foreign language teacher, all right? I'm not an industrial machinist or something. I did it all with household homeowner tools, all right? It's not hard to do if you like projects like this. But if you don't, and you want somebody else to do it for you, contact Steven at Ugly Drum Smokers Texas. He says he'll talk you into building one and getting you the parts. And if you don't want to build your own, he'll be glad to build one for you. He's got experience and he does a fantastic job. Check out his Facebook page below for Ugly Drum Smokers Texas. You'll see some of the builds he's made. And if you want to pay him to do one for you, he'll build one for you and he'll get it to you. Anyway, thank you for watching Big Lou Barbecue. I usually say it in Spanish. Gracias por mirar. Oh, <laughs>